blessing now. Healing now. Come on. We'll reserve that for some other time. Amen. Oh, yeah. They don't know how to sing it, so don't let me. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. If you're happy to be in church this morning, come and shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. It's been a wonderful year. It's been a glorious year. It's been, a, it's been 62 years of turmoil, of challenges, of great things. There are times, there are great times, there are great stories, great testimonies about our country, Nigeria. But we believe God that the plan and the purpose of God for those nations shall be fulfilled. Amen. I didn't hear you believing. Amen. Amen. No matter what your plans might be, your plan might be to jack back in the next few days, in the next few weeks, in the next few years. But one thing remains. Nigeria is flowing in your blood. Yes, this is your origin. This is where you belong. That is why you see every man, every woman in the diaspora today, they are raising up their voice. Are they not comfortable where they are? They are. Are they not doing well where they are? They are. But they cannot keep silent again. Why? Because they are first and foremost Nigerians. No matter what you become anywhere in the world, when they are going to describe you, they are going to describe you by your origin. Nigerian born, Kemi, Bene, whatever. What's her name again? Badenok. They will still put it there. The day she's, she's doing well, they will tell you she's British. Yes. But the day something, comma, happens to her, they say, Nigerian born British. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So if you don't get it, so you are first of all a Nigerian. No matter where you find yourself, no matter how much you change your color, if it's not Panadol, it's not the same as Panadol. No matter how much you know how to speak British and roll your tongue, they will fish you out. They will know you, you're just trying to belong. So let us be concerned about our country. Don't let us lose hope about our country. Because no matter where you go, you are still going to come back to Nigeria. Your people are in Nigeria. Your family, they are here. If you like to start building families over the other uh, uh, your this is your root. A song I say, Nigeria yiti go go wani. Koma godo baje. You don't understand. That is saying that Nigeria is, belongs to all of us. It must not scatter, it must not spoil in our hand. There's no other place we want to go to. There's no place like home. There's no place like, like what? Like home. Let's join our hands together and let's lift this nation up. Carry Nigeria, let's lift Nigeria up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm preaching from the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. This month of October is a month of understanding what the times and the seasons of God. The times and the seasons of God. So as you may look at it, as a country we are going through a phase. It's a season. Life is in seasons. Men are in sizes. If you don't understand the season that you are in, then you might be short changing yourself because you don't know what's up. Praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor, do you know what's up? Ask your neighbor, do you know what's up? Let me ask you, say, what time is it? Everything is all about timing. Amen. So, 
Here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, chapter 4, I have just 17 minutes to do this. The Lord will help me in Jesus' name. Now the Spirit, the Spirit speak expressly. Come and say expressly. That in the latter times, some shall depart from faith. Some, not all, we thank God for that. Some will depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits or deceptive spirits. That's the meaning of that seducing. Deceptive spirits and doctrines of the devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. Amen. If you can put it on amplified button on the screen, I would love that. Here we see Apostle Paul writing to Timothy, who is a bishop of the church as a den, that the Spirit of God speak expressly. The word expressly there is also meaning that the word is speaking quickly. It's speaking expediently. It's speaking about something that is going to happen. It's unchangeable. That in the latter days, these are the things that will happen. Praise the Lord. In the, in the latter days, these are the things that will happen. That is to say, it's speaking expressly saying that these things that I'm saying will happen will abound to happen. Nothing can change it. You cannot pray it out of the way. You cannot pray that the end will not come because the end will come. No matter how much you enjoy this life, you cannot pray that Jesus will not come. Jesus is coming back. Let me tap your neighbor and say, wake up. Wake up. Collect your money. <laughs> Jesus is what? He's coming back. Though he tarry, he will come. So no matter how much you enjoy this life and enjoy what you're doing, live your life like the world is going to end tomorrow. Plan as if the world will never end. You might want to write that down. Live your life as if tomorrow the hand will come. But plan as if the hand will never come. So that does not remove the place of planning. So don't say because Jesus is coming tomorrow, I fold my hands, I'm doing nothing. I'm waiting for Jesus to come. While you're waiting, keep doing what you're supposed to do. Keep fulfilling purpose. Keep running your race. Keep doing what God has assigned you to do. So what now Paul is writing to Timothy here that if you put the brethren in verse 6, he said, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister. So I want to be a good minister. So I'm reminding you that the end is at hand. It might not be an interesting message that will want to make you to jump up. Hey, it is interesting. Because there are two Parallel direction to this message. When we hear that the hand is coming, all that we read in our mind is doom. You remember the words Armageddon. Remember the words tribulation. That is all that you remember. You remember the word of the Antichrist. That is what we always remember. And that's why we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about the bad side. But it's written. He said, I speak to you expressly. It will come. However, on the other hand, the whole pilot said that while that is ongoing, there's another glory side of the hand. Praise the Lord. There's another word, glory side of the hand, which talks about good things that will happen to you and I. We talk about good things that will happen to people who love God. So what will happen to you, what you should expect when we talk about the end time, whether doom or glory depends on the divide where you fall into. If you're on the side of those that love God, then you should expect glory. If you're on the side of those that don't love God, that don't, don't want to hear about God, then you should expect doom. Because as the enemy is trying to ensure that 
people go through suffering, God will ensure that his own people go through good times. So it's a time for the church. It's a time of glory for the church. The message of end time is a time of glory for the church. The message of end time is a time of the supernatural for the church. It is time of the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a time when the church will emerge and take a place. It is a time when you as a Christian will flourish. Praise the Lord. I said, it shall come to pass on that day that how many, how many women would tie to one Jew and say, let us follow you. Let's just answer and let us go to where your God is. It is a time when you will shine and the kings will come to the brightness of your rising. When nations will come to the brightness of the rising. It's a time when things will begin to happen on the other side. But what is happening on the other side is not happening to you. So people on the other side will look at your side and say, what is happening there? Can we go there? It's a time when you will shine and you attract many to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You remember what happened in Israel? When there was in Egypt, when there was darkness in the whole of Egypt, there's a little town in the center of Egypt, it's called Goshen. There was darkness all around, but there was light in Goshen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Either you like it or not, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 61, 60, that darkness shall cover the head and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall what? Shall rise upon you and his glory shall be seen. This is a time for you to become more relevant. Because the darker the darkness, the more relevant the light. When the world is dark and gloomy, that is when your light becomes relevant. Praise the Lord. No matter how tiny your light is, if you switch off the whole of this place, if you are the only one that has a mobile phone that has a light, everybody will follow you. Your light. Because you are the only one that knows the way. Am I making sense? Said. So, the darkness shall cover the earth and God's darkness will be moved, but the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. A nation, kings, will come to the brightness of your rising. Praise the Lord. So that is where we are going to be emphasizing. We are emphasizing the glory that you are about to enter into in this end time. Come say, I'm about to enter into glory. Come say, I'm about to enter into glory. A glory that you have never seen before. Tap your neighbor and say, I'm about to enter into a glory. I'm about to enter into a realm of glory that you have never experienced before. Say, look at me now. It doesn't matter what you see now. There's a glory that is coming on me. That is indescribable. Thank you, Jesus. When you see me in the glory, you will bow. But I pray, when you see me in the glory, you also be in that same glory. In the name of Jesus. So that is what we're going to be talking about this morning. The glory that is available for you. On the other side, what the Bible says is that deception will be the order of the day. And that's what Jesus, Paul was writing to, 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 to Timothy. That in the latter days, in the last days, what last days there is what called eschatos. Praise the Lord. I might not have time to break it down to you, but just watch this space. This month, you receive the kind of teaching you have never received before. Amen. Your hair will your head will swell in the name of Jesus. So whenever I stop here, I continue on Thursday. I beg you, don't miss any of these messages because it's a series. Eschatos is that's where we have the word eschatology, which is the study of the end times. That's the last days. The last days. What that last day doesn't mean the last day. The last day, that is the last of the last of the last. I've told you before, when, I, when, we, did, when we did this topic some two years ago, the last of the last. When, like, when you want to describe the last day of the month of the last day, the last day of the month of December, of the month of the last, the month of the last in the year, and the year of the last, the last of the last, the eschatos. So we are not just in the last days, we are in the last of the last days. Amen. If you go to quickly go to the book of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Praise God, somebody. In Matthew chapter 24, you will see here, the Bible says in verse 3, and the disciples sat on the Mount of Olives, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives with the disciples, and they came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? 
That's the disciples, they were asking Jesus, when will these things be? What shall be the sign? Nobody knows when the end will be. So forget it. It's all deception. If somebody tells you that the world is going to end in 2027 20, or 20, whatever, nobody knows. Tap your neighbor and say, nobody knows. That's why I told you, if you don't know, if nobody knows, that's why you need to live your life as if tomorrow is going to happen. And plan your life as if it will never happen. So nobody knows. But there are signs for us to know that we are closer to the end. And those are the signs that we're asking. We say, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? The sign of the latter days. And look at the first thing that Jesus said to them. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no man what? Take it that no man what? Take it that no man what? So what will be happening in the world, which perhaps will also start to happen in the church, or which is already happening, is deception. Is what? Deception. The devil is all out to deceive as many people as possible. I'll read some things to you quickly. The first sign, deception. Moral wandering. People who used to be morally right now wandering in immoral, immoral deception. They are now wandering in moral deception. The things that used to be wrong before are now looking right. Mm. Are now looking right. Praise the Lord. I was at the swimming pool yesterday and I saw a lady came out of the swimming pool. Father, that is the word. Father, when we were growing up, if that kind of person appeared in the public, a mother would come out from somewhere and give a rapper and beat her. Yes. <laughs> but today, but in the spirit of all inclusiveness, we tolerate a lot of things. A lot of things are happening now, they are even applauding them. So the things that used to be wrong in our sight before, now if we it's, if it's say it's wrong, they say you are, you are, you are, hate speech. You are not contemporary. So that's why I said many would depart, not that they reject. They are two different, they don't reject the faith, but they depart from the faith. Departure means that they begin to move, deviate slightly from what used to be right. The scripture now, the Bible says, some people will say, the Bible is an hate Bible. As someone was saying that, every other book has gone through revision. They have revised the, the dictionary. Because if you go into the dictionary now and type um, marriage, define marriage, if you see the contemporary definition of marriage, you shut it because it's all inclusive. But if you go to the old dictionary, I will tell you, marriage is a union between a man and a woman. But today, it is no longer a man and a woman. Marriage is the union between two parties. So the two parties can be anything. Can be two human beings, can be two animals, a man and an animal, a man and a bird, a man and his dog. A man and a tree, whatever. Praise the Lord. I don't know what to do now. I have four minutes. <laughs> They wander from biblical principle and built their lives on society and blah, 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 blah. It means a moral con concussion. People are morally confused now about their sex. People are morally confused about their sex. When they, when they, when they give birth to a child in, in some, of, some countries now, they don't put in their birth certificate male or female. That when the child grows up, it will determine the one he wants to be. It's happening now. The devil is deceiving. So people have lost their identity. They don't know who they are again. Praise the Lord. In some countries in Europe, if you opt to change your sex, the government will sponsor you. There is a grant in the government if you decide that today I don't want to become a man again. And it's expensive to change your sex. The government will give you Loan support to change your who you are. Not even loan, it's a grant. Dash like a dash. Tell anybody there's confusion everywhere. There's confusion. So so a a, a, a grown-up child now doesn't know 
whether he is a he or she. And when a, a child is growing up in the house where, where daddy, is, daddy is John and mommy is uh, John Bull, <laughs> the guy is confused. Because when he gets to school and he sees his friend and the mommy, daddy is John and mommy is Janet. And they, they look different. But in his own house, the daddy and the mommy, they are the same figure one. And he's wondering. His brain is already what? Confused. There are no more confusion everywhere. So there's deception. And that is deception that is even, so deception in the world, the deception is in politics too. And that's why they will deceive everybody. They will deceive you, come and give you a bag of rice now and tell you that bag of rice is worth so much more than your birthright. The Bible talks about in the Hebrew that not, let none of you be like Esau. Who for the for the plate of meal sold what is bad rights? It's deception. Take a plate of food and give me your bad right. Because your bad right now does not have any tangibility in your hand. The same way your PVC does not have any tangibility in your hand. But you think that this PVC, what will it buy me? If I exchange this PVC for 2,000 naira or for 4,000 naira. 10,000 naira. How long will the 10,000 naira? So it's a deception. It's a transaction that is, that is, sh that is uh, shrouded under deception. And that's why we must wake up as a country. Praise the Lord. So while that deception is going on in the world, you are the chosen generation. You are the light of the world. You are the one that God has put. So because the, 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 the cure for deception, the cure for ignorance is knowledge. It's knowledge. We must be discerning. Discerning spirits. And that's what I want to talk about. And I'll continue that on Thursday. We must have the discerning spirit. And God has poured his spirit on us. Now we talked about the children of Issachar. Let's go that there quickly. The children of Issachar in the book of Chronicles. Thank you, Jesus. Where is that Issachar story? First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which we are men that had understanding of times to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200 and their brethren were their command. If you read that scripture, it was talking about the lineage of children of Israel. They were all in large numbers. The smallest of them were the children of Issachar. They were just 200. But they were the one that was ruling and reigning over their brethren because they understood they know what time it is. They know what Israel ought to do per time. They have understanding of the times and the season. So the spirit of the children of Issachar is the same spirit that God has poured upon us on the latter days. So if you go to Joel chapter 2, the Bible says, on the last days he shall pour out his spirit. Joel 2, 28. He will pour out his spirit upon us. The same last days when there will be deception, the same last day God is pouring out his spirit upon his people to give them understanding. The devil is pouring out the spirit of deception upon the world to make them not to understand. To make them follow after their feelings. Because I feel hungry, they give you 10,000 naira now. That 10,000 naira will not last you one week. After four years, you are still hungry. You are still in your predicament. You are still in your trouble. And they'll come after four years again to deceive you again. To deceive them again. And bring, okay, this time around, we'll give you two bags of rice. With two bags of rice, how long can it last you? You and your family, let's even assume, it lasts you for one year. The remaining three years, what are you going to eat? Deception. So the same deception is ongoing, the same way the Spirit of God has been poured upon people like you. For us to understand, for us to wake up, so that we can become the light and begin to tell the world that, listen, this is deception. Don't be deceived. Jesus said, don't let any man what? Deceive you. Tell your neighbor, don't let any man deceive you. Say, don't let any man deceive you. Praise the Lord. You have the spirit of God. But also by the spirit, we can know all things. Amen. Can I speak? Rise to your feet. Time is up.
Tell neighbor, let no man deceive you. Say, let no man deceive you. Your responsibility as someone that carries the light is to do what? When you carry the light, what are you supposed to do? Shine. So it's not time to be quiet. It's not time to be silent. It's time to what? Sorosoke. And speak out. When you see people doing the wrong thing, tell them they are deceiving you. Praise the Lord. Tell them they're deceiving you. Enough is enough. We need to come to that understanding that this country belongs to us. Whatever we do now, our children will live to see it. Amen. We'll talk more on Thursday. I leave you with the scripture. Thank you, Jesus. John 15, 16. Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruits and that your fruits should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he may give unto you. So we have been chosen to bear fruits. We have been chosen to multiply, to replenish the earth and subdue. Praise the Lord. That is our assignment. That is why we are called. That's why he called us. So you are chosen. Tell anybody you are chosen. Come say you are chosen. So you are chosen to go and bear fruits. And we must bear fruit as Christians in Jesus' name.